everyone, so a few things before I start this video. Number one, pre-filmed video alert by the time this video goes up. We fingers crossed should have moved. So this will be the last time that you see this background, which is kind of sad. It's the last video I'm filming in here. I've tried to get a bit ahead because we're basically moving in to a semi-building site. So on Wednesday, who knows what video will be going up. There will be a new video, but it could be in an empty room, but we'll see. Number two, if you can hear any raking or mowing going on, it's because there's like gardeners for the flat complex that literally arrived about two minutes before I turned this video on. So apologies if there's any background noise. Oh, plane going over as well. So today I'm going to show you a foundation free makeup menu. This is what I've been wearing when it's really hot and I'm very sweaty and I just don't want to wear a lot of things on my skin. So there's really not too many products here. It's very neutral. It's the makeup that I've been wearing in all my most recent videos. Very simple. There's just a bit of bronze going on on the eye and then a little bit of peach on the lips as well. Normally I would save this makeup menu for when I feel like I'm having a really good skin day because all I use here is a CC cream and a bit of concealer. Today I definitely don't feel like I'm having a skin day. I've got a few eruptions going on. One there. That's a very interesting place to get a spot. But I thought it would be good to show you that even with a few pimples, you can definitely rock like a BB or a CC or a tinted moisturizer style thing. So the first thing that I'm gonna use is a little mix that I like to do some mornings, and it's the Sarah Chapman Skin Assist Morning Facial and the Estee Lauder Revitalizing Supreme CC Cream. I love both of these products, and I'm just taking a dollop of each into my palm, massaging it in, and I'm just gonna apply that all over my face with my fingers. Now I like this Estee Lauder CC cream because it has quite a bit of warmth to it, and right now my face is looking quite pale. So it's nice to get a bit of color in there. It has a hint of coverage, but nothing too much, nothing too like suffocating on the skin. It just feels very light. And then that little bit of oil from the Sarah Chapman product just makes things look a little bit dewier. So for concealer, I'm gonna go in with this. It's from Kat Von D and it is their Lock It Tattoo Concealer. I use this in the shade Light 18. And I'm just taking a tiny, 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 tiny bit of this. You really don't need a lot. Dabbing it in between my fingers and then dotting it under my eyes and kind of on any redness that I've got so for me that's around my nose and slightly on my cheeks but this stuff is very heavy duty but also very blendable it doesn't look cakey or anything like that on the skin I'm just gonna blend that in with a MAC 188 brush but you could use your fingers or a beauty blender or something like that so once that's all blended in that literally took all of about two minutes. I'm gonna take my Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage Palette in the shade SC3. Now, if you're a big fan of Lisa Eldridge's videos, you would have seen her use this before. It's a very thick, waxy, full, full coverage concealer. It doesn't get any higher than that in the concealer stakes. I personally wouldn't use this under my eyes. My friend does. She mixes it with a bit of the primer and then kind of makes it a bit more liquidy and applies it under there, but I prefer it just for spot concealing. And I take it on a MAC 210 brush, which is tiny, tiny, tiny. And I sort of put it in both of the colors because I'm sort of a mix of the two. There's more of a yellow side and then more of a pinky side. I just kind of blend the two together and then pop it on anywhere where I want that really high coverage. And the best way that I find to blend it out is by using my finger. So I just kind of pat the color in. But this is great for any pimples that are just looking a little bit red and a little bit angry and it saves you putting a full coverage base all over your face which is really good for the summer because then you're just getting that coverage exactly where you need it. If I was having quite a low key day I probably would just leave it there and pop a bit of mascara on, a little bit of lip balm and be done. But I'm going to go a little bit further today and sort of recreate the look I've been doing recently so I'm going to set that with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder in the shade 1 Fair and I'm just taking that on a MAC 150 brush kind of on any areas where I need a little bit more coverage, a little bit of matting out. Oh, I've got another spot there. I'm not putting a lot of this on, I'm just popping it down the center of the face where any dewiness could read as greasiness if you were like on a sweaty tube or something. Then for bronzer, I'm gonna use this from Too Faced and this is their Milk Chocolate Soleil Light Slash Medium Matte Bronzer. I love this bronzer, it is great. Again, I'm just gonna take that on my MAC 150 brush. And I just think this is a great shade. It's very honey toned. It's not orange at all. It's not ready at all. It just looks very natural on the skin. And it smells, it smells so good. It's like that bourgeois one that smelled chocolate. 
Oh, I love it's it. Brows. Now for brows, keeping it really simple, just using the Bobbi Brown perfectly defined longwear brow pencil in the shade grey. So just brushing through my brows and then just lightly filling them in. I find this is really long wearing, so your brows aren't going to melt off halfway through the day. So I've curled my lashes off camera, haha, <laughs> you're never going to see that. And then I'm just applying the NARS Pro Prime Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base all over my lids. And you would have noticed that I've decanted mine. It's in a little pot that says NARS on the top just in case I ever forget what's in there because it was just getting to the point where I couldn't really get much out of the applicator but I sawed it in half with our bread knife shush don't tell Mark and there was loads left in there I scooped it all out and it almost filled up a whole one of that which I'm very happy about then for eyeshadow I'm gonna go for something that's super long wearing because I don't like feeling like there's anything too tacky going on on my eyelids and also when my eyelids are quite greasy powders just get eaten up like that even when I pop a primer on. So I'm going for a liquid to powder kind of setting creamy eyeshadow and I've got a few choices here. The Giorgio Armani eye tints, I've got these in the shade 9 and 10. 10 is actually a very good match for what I'm going to use today. This is the Chanel Stilo eyeshadow, fresh effect eyeshadow in the shade Karoob. 147. I've got a feeling this was limited edition, so that's why I gave you the, the Giorgio Armani dupe just in case. But it's in a very similar vein to By Terry Misty Rock in that it's quite brown, but there's a bit of violet going on. It's a little bit reddy in some lights. It just looks completely different depending on what light you're looking at it in. And I love how easy it is to apply. I'm miles away from my mirror right now, and I'm managing it. I'm just popping that all over the lid, being quite messy about it. Feels very cooling on the lid. Perfect for when you're getting hot and bothered in the morning putting your makeup on. Oh, I think that's the gardener's going. Yay! <laughs> and then I've got my MAC 2 on 7 and I'm just getting off the previous eyeshadow that I used on my pyjama bottoms because I'm so classy like that. Don't worry, they're going in the wash after this. And then I'm taking that all around and I'm doing one eye at a time because this tends to set. In fact, I think I've left it perhaps a little bit too long. So then I'm just doing the same on the other eyelid, taking that all over and blending it out. I have a feeling this is very similar to my last makeup menu. And for that, I apologize. I really appreciate those that are hanging on in there with me during this move. I'm very excited to get settled and back into the routine of things again. Now this stuff is like glue on the eyelids, like it is not going anywhere at all. So I'm just popping on a bit of mascara and for that I'm going to use the Maybelline Lash Sensational Lash Multiplying Mascara Waterproof and really like it. In fact, I think right now my perfect mascara combination is the Fairy Drops Scandal Queen Waterproof Mascara, that's the one, with this over the top. I just think this gives like the volume whereas that gives like the length and the separation. You could go underneath with the eyeshadow, it does look really nice, I've done it in the past but I think today I'm just going to leave it there. And then for the final touch for lips, I've got two options, the Bobbi Brown Sheer Lip Colour in the shade Sunset Pink, really enjoying this recently, however it is not sheer at all. It's actually quite opaque. It's very juicy in finish. But instead I'm going to use this one from MAC. This is their Luster Lipstick in the shade Flamingo. Picked this up about a month ago now. Really, really enjoying it. I love that it's quite sheer. It's not very long lasting, but it just adds a real like pop of neonish, pastely, peachy pink to the lip. And that is the finished look, a foundation free makeup menu with a peachy lip and a bronze eye like I've been wearing a lot recently, but I really hope you enjoyed this. I'm very excited about the next video, I don't know what it will be. Fingers crossed we have an internet connection by then, who knows, we'll see how it goes, but thank you so much for all of your like kind messages, all of your support, massively, massively appreciate it, and I will see you then, bye!